Now let's move on to Gen Z and their embrace of radical gender theory. We've got data now showing 51% of this group say there are more than two genders. And uh, I think this has all sorts of implications, Douglas. You've written this week about uh, so-called gender-affirming care for children. And when you become to, you know, accept that there's 150-plus genders, that we all have to declare our pronouns, then you become comfortable with these irreversible treatments mm -hmm. being inflicted on confused young children. Yes, I mean, there's, there's a term there, isn't it, Rita? Gender-affirming care. Sounds so nice. Mm. You wouldn't notice if you if, if 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 you didn't bother to look into it that it involves, for instance, flaying the leg or the arm of a, a young woman, giving her ir ir irreversible scarring, and then trying to create a phallus. I mean, I mean, it, that's gender affirming care. Apparently, it sounds so lovely until you look at the facts. Uh, I'm I'm confused. I'm yeah, a useless phallus. Yes, absolutely. I, I'm, you know, I, 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 I'm very worried that, that people have just been indoctrinated into this stupidity. You know, there are, are only two sexes. There are lots of different expressions of sexuality people can have, but they don't change biological reality. And my worry about this has always been the same, which is effectively not... I don't like lies. I don't like untruths being mm. pushed into the public square because I know that what comes next will be another lie and a bigger lie and you'll be asked to believe something even more ridiculous next week than you were this. That's why this is important. Mm. It's not just a sort of about a craze or a fad. It's about people who have been made highly susceptible to totally provably wrong things. Absolutely, and that's precisely what Dr Jordan Peterson said too about this data. He said if you swallow the biggest possible lie, then you're prepared to swallow all the other lies that follow, Absolutely. and uh, that's uh, one of the enormous worries here. And finally, uh, more madness from your home city of New York where there is a fatwa against coal and wood-fired pizza being declared. Uh, apparently, this is going to save the environment. It's upset a few people. Here's one angry New Yorker who's throwing pizza slices at City Hall. Give us pizza or give us death. New York City is nothing without pizza. Douglas, what is going on in your adopted home city? Well, um, this is this is the latest in a development of ones. There was, there was an attempt. Uh, the Democrats announced last year that, that people's gas stoves uh, would be removed from them, and now now people's uh, uh, cold wood fired pizzas are meant to be wrestled from our cold dead hands. Uh, uh, I, I think it's a mad row to pick with New Yorkers who who are not going to give up their pizza <laughs> easily. Uh, but it's another example of the crazy way in which a certain type of Democrat left winger decides that, 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 you know, all the difference in the climate change issue will be decided by whether or not New Yorkers have uh, wood-fired pizzas for dinner. And I'm fairly sure that the, the main polluter in the world remains uh, countries like China and India. And, and they really don't care much about a few New Yorker Manhattanite pizzas. I don't think it's going to be the tipping point in the whole global warming thing. <laughs> I just can't believe you can't get a good slice in New York shortly. I mean, you need a wood-fired pizza oven to get the perfect yep. slice. And uh, just another reason to avoid New York these days. Douglas Murray, thank you oh. for joining me.